lighting people, Granime 3 version 2.3 has brought a complete revamp to how sheet masking and filters work. Filters are now used for sheet masking and the concept of dynamic filters has been introduced. A dynamic filter is any filter that has this little icon right here and these cannot be used for anything except sheet masking. So whenever you have a dynamic filter that you would like to use in sheet masking, you can enable the mask toolbar in any sheet view and then assign to a spot. And I already have this one in two locations, which is not necessary. So I'm going to delete it from this one. But the bottom line is you can assign your dynamic filters to here. You can also assign non-dynamic filters as well but dynamic filters can only be assigned here. There are several indications we have of this. If we try to use them, say, in the recipe editor, they'll gray out, um, and there's different ways that the system will show you. You can't use a dynamic filter in anything except a sheet. The way these work is pretty cool. So the reason why they can only be used in a sheet mode is because the information changes dynamically based on other factors in your show file. So like programmer only is a familiar thing that we've used before, just not in this format. The same with selection only, where it shows you only selected fixtures or only values that are active in the programmer. Parked only is going to show you only fixtures that are parked. Changed is going to show you anything that has been changed in the current queue. Multi-step will show you phaser values and feature is going to work very much like the dynamic preset pool where Whatever feature you have selected in the title bar is going to be shown. Actually, I'll have to enable this here to show you that. But with this enabled, anything I have selected in the title bar is the only one showing in the sheet, which is definitely pretty cool, especially when used in conjunction with the dynamic preset pool. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you how the filter editor actually looks in this version of MA3. We have one of the new types of static filters that I've made here, and we're going to edit that one and try some different things. And then this one here is a dimmer only filter, which functions basically like our old filters did, where we have attributes and I have only dimmer selected. So anytime you create a new filter, it always gives you first this attributes thing and you have to delete it if you don't want to include it in the filter at all. But we're going to start with this one right here and I'm going to show you how this actually works. So in this one, I did not delete the attributes line. However, I did turn off apply to attributes, which basically means that this line isn't doing anything at all. Because if you set the apply to attributes column for any filter item to no, it's not going to apply to attributes. You can also change apply to fixtures to no if you don't want it to apply to fixtures. Now in this editor, as you can see, we have two different rule sets here and each one has its own filter rule in it. In this case, attributes isn't doing anything anyway. This one has DMX mode, which I will show you how that works in a minute. But the reason why we have different rule sets is because this now gives us the ability to use either AND or OR logic for our rules. So if we add a new filter rule in the same rule object, I could just add a second attributes one. It is going to give you this, which is an AND symbol. It's like a Venn diagram. It's showing only the middle part is highlighted. So it has to be both included in this item and in this item in order to get through the filter. Anything in here, this one shows a Venn diagram with all parts shaded. Anything with either this or this will be allowed through the filter. It doesn't have to include everything, only one rule set or the other rule set. So that's an important thing to understand when it comes to the logic for filters. This DMX mode setting here is going to give us the ability to choose one DMX mode out of our show. So of all the DMX modes for all of the fixture types patched in the show, we can select one and only fixtures using that DMX mode will be included in the filter. This is pretty cool because you can select your one DMX mode and basically this is only going to let you use fixtures in that DMX mode, which also means only fixtures of that type. So this could be very useful for making sure that you're only using your quantum profiles, for instance. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete this rule because I don't need it. I'm going to actually delete this entire rule set. And you can't actually change this. Once you've added a new filter rule, you cannot change it. You can only delete it if you don't want it anymore and add a new one. 
I'm going to show you some of the other options that we have now. Fixture layer and class lets you select a layer and a class or one or the other, whichever, and it will filter just to those layer and class. I don't have any layers or classes in use in this particular show file right now, but that is a neat feature. And then you also have the option for ID type, so you can choose fixture, channel, universal, etc. And you have from two, so you can choose the ID type and then say you just want to be able to select fixture 100 through 199, you can put that in and that will limit to only those fixture IDs. Another option is name and this lets you put in a text for the name filter. This is very much like when you're searching in say the recipe editor for a specific group and you put in a filter to filter down the results. But this is just filtering fixtures that contain that word in the name of the fixture. Another option is patch, which lets you select the patch from in two values, which will be included. And we also have the option of filtering to stage. So you can select a specific stage and only show fixtures that are used in that stage. Those are all pretty much doing similar things. They're just allowing you slightly different ways of manipulating those kinds of objects. But one of my favorites is used in object. And this is pretty cool because you can actually select a group, a world, a preset, or a sequence. And whenever you do that, it's basically saying only use the fixtures in this object. Now, of course you can select a group and it will function very similarly to all of those other filter rules that are limiting you to a certain set of fixtures, except that a group is dynamic because you can store over it. So then this would function very similarly to using a group in a recipe. If you're applying the filter to something, then whenever you overwrite the group, it changes that dynamically, which is definitely a neat use. But the ones that really excite me are preset and sequence, and really especially sequence, honestly because now you can select a sequence and you can say only use fixtures that are in the sequence and this is not a dynamic rule. So you can apply this rule to a recipe for instance. And so in this case you could say, okay, I only want this queue to output values for fixtures that are already programmed into this other sequence, which like that could have some really awesome uses. So I like that idea also, of course you can filter it down to the objects that are stored in a specific preset and that could also be really awesome. So there are definitely a lot of new uses for filters in MA3 that we didn't have before. Another thing I will mention is this invert column which lets you invert the rules so that instead of restricting the filter to what's included in this rule it is everything excluded by this rule. Basically filters just got so much better so much more dynamic, so much more versatile. It's really exciting. But another thing I do wanna just let you know about is it says in the release notes that you cannot import filter objects exported in old versions before or up to and including version 2.2.5. What that means is like here we have the option to import and export filters, but you can't import one that was exported in an old version. Instead, what they say to do is import the filter into a 2.2.5 show file and then migrate that show file to 2.3. Obviously, if you are needing to get it into a 2.3 show file, your workaround could be to import it in an empty show file in 2.2.5, migrate that to 2.3, then export it from that show file in 2.3 and import it into your new 2.3 show file. Kind of frustrating to have to go through all that trouble, but at the same time, there was so much improvement to the filter feature in this version that honestly, I think it's kind of worth it. And it's totally understandable how importing old filters would not work with all the changes. I hope this video helped you out with understanding the new filters in MA3 version 2.3. If there's anything else you think I missed or should make another video on, let me know in the comments. I will read and respond to every comment. I will see you in another video later. Hope you have a great week. Happy programming.